um, our last company of the day, um, the fourth company is uh, actually not much of a company at all. Uh, it's a nonprofit and uh, something else, we'll find out more. It's called Spark Truck, and Eugene and I actually went to college together, and he's also named Eugene, so this is really you know, meant to be. So, um, Eugene, I'll let you take it away. All right, thank you, Eugene. <laughs> doctor, doctor. Um, cool. Um, have we been sitting for a while? Do we need, why don't we stand up for a minute? Just stand up. Everybody up. Up on your feet. Up. 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 Stretch to the sky. Real tall, real tall. Lean to the left. Lean to the right. All right, have a seat. So, Spark Truck is this. Um, I, I don't like sitting for too long. Um, Spark Truck. Spark Truck is um, most of what it sounds. Um, it is a truck that looks like this from the outside. Um, and from the inside, it looks like this. Um, and the whole thing started as kind of a pipe dream by me and a couple of my friends in grad school. We were in the Stanford Design Program. And for our thesis project, we were told, do something, anything you want for a year, make sure it has positive impact on people. That was about the scope and definition of what we could do. Um, so, so after about three months of hitting our head against the walls and brainstorming, we came up with this idea. We would um, make school more fun. We would, we would get all these things together, um, like fun hands-on tools and materials and arts and craft supplies, and drive around to local schools to run hands-on workshops and have kids build stuff and take a break from multiple choice questions for an hour and kind of enjoy life. Um, and so we did, after we had the idea, the, the cool kids thing to do, which was to run a Kickstarter campaign. Um, we we um, got a bunch of dollars, we got a truck, we were really excited about the truck, we made ourselves a truck shaped cake to celebrate the attainment of the truck. Um, the truck still looked like this when we got it, so we were like, right, there's still more work to do. Um, what's that? Was it a UPS truck? I think it was a FedEx truck once in its, in its past life. Um, the only clue we have right now as to what it was actually is there's a sticker on the inside of the front visor that says McConnell Air Force Base Airfield. So I think it did some service back in the day, but now it does fun things. Um, was it on the set of Breaking Bad? Uh, I have to take the fifth on that. Um, so you know, as, as, as I kind of say, oh, we had an empty truck, and then we turned it into cool things. There were a lot of empty, failed prototypes along the way. Like we had this idea that we we're going to make this inflatable classroom. And we built this huge thing, and we stayed up all night, and, and we set it up, and then the place we set it up at, they said, you know, you can't have kids in there. That's kind of like a large dry cleaning bag. You're gonna... But no, what are you talking about? Everywhere is a fire exit. They all have scissors. It didn't fly. Um, and so, so what did we actually do with the truck, though, is we, we drove to local schools and we taught these workshops in which kids would kind of get to play with the arts and crafts supplies, as well as some high-tech stuff that we have in there, like a laser cutter, 3D printer, um, fancy iPads, and stuff like that. Um, and they made all this cool stuff. And, you know, here's an example of one of the little popsicle stick and motor and makes a robot and runs around the, the room. And we didn't think much of it. We thought we were having fun. We thought the kids were having fun. And then we started getting feedback like this. And you know, this wasn't an isolated instance either. This kind of kept piling in. So we were like, OK, fine, fine. This, this clearly, there's a need for this kind of stuff for these hands-on workshops. So let's take the show on the road. So we did. Um, we didn't have any plans of having the project last past June, which was our graduation date, but enough emails, emails started pouring in, inviting the truck to all sorts of places, that we decided to spend the summer and drive across the country and back. It's not the most fuel efficient way to get across the country, because <laughs> it has the aerodynamics, basically, of a refrigerator. Um, so, you know, we, we took, so, so we took some gas, gas uh, shortcomings. Anyway, we, we um, went to places far and wide, teaching these hands-on workshops, and the kids all made physical things and, and we're excited about them. We got to see everywhere from Seattle to the desert to random gas stations all over the place. We saw a lot of gas stations. Um, um, don't ever go to New York in a big vehicle. Just don't do it. Just, if you think about it, just ha have your plan end at the thinking part. Um, don't, don't execute. Um, but we, we wound up having all sorts of um, positive experiences on the road that wound up reaching lots of kids, and we got fun media exposure. Um, here we were on, on Andrea Mitchell reports. Um, that was really fun. We got to speak at a couple of TEDx events. Um, and, and the whole thing was really, really fun for us. For us, this is what it was about. Um, so when we came back, we decided, well, it can't just stop at one road trip. So the following year, this was summer of 2012, the following year, we 
uh, recruited a new generation of five college students, gave them the truck, said you can do anything you want with it, so naturally they put on googly eyes, um, and had this kind of period of, of rethinking, after which it emerged in a new way, and this is them. Um, they took, on, took it on a second trip, and after we came back, we turned the truck into a continuing nonprofit, kind of is the one way to say it because it's part of Stanford University, so I guess it's kind of a nonprofit. Um, but it lives inside Stanford, and it's an ongoing student-run project, continuing to bring these kinds of hands-on experiences to local kids and maybe even far and wide kids across the country. Can you sleep in the truck? So, questions? Can you sleep in the truck? Can we sleep in the truck? I really wanted to, and then after we put all the crap in it, there was no more room for people, so no. Could not sleep in the truck. Um, is it safe for people to be on top of the truck? I didn't try to climb up there, and I wasn't supervising these guys when they did, but they're all still alive. Um, is, is, so I can answer empirically. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that helmet would have really helped. Yeah. What's one of the more notable children's stories in response to What's, so the question is, what, what's one notable story from one of the kids interacting with the truck? Um, this kind of kept happening on the road. Um, we'd be doing a workshop, and you know the challenge was maybe to build this little robot. And and you know a ten year old boy would come up to me and say, Hey, I, how do you build legs? I don't know how do you build legs on this thing. Um, and you know, there's popsicle sticks lying around and pipe cleaners and scotch tape, so it's not really clear how one builds legs onto this thing without any instructions. So I said, the first time I heard the question, I don't know, what do you think? Because honestly, I really didn't know how to build legs on that kind of thing, right? Um, and the kid said, well, um, I don't know, maybe you could use the, the pipe cleaners. I said, okay, sure, that's, that, that may be a good idea. And he said, well, but I don't know how to attach them. I said, hmm, yeah, I don't know, what do you think? So he kind of looked around, and he's like, well, I guess we can use the, the, the painter's tape. And I said, okay, try that. <laughs> Didn't hear from him for the next 20 minutes. Um, and over and over again, I saw this, this kind of gear shift happen when, when the kid would change from a mode of, there's an adult here who's going to tell me all the right answers, to this different kind of mode where the right answer is something that I'm allowed to invent. I don't have to wait for wisdom and knowledge to come to me. I don't have to be a consumer of all these things. I can be a maker of these things. Um, and that was a really extraordinarily powerful switch to see flip in their heads. Uh, yes? So the experience you're giving to the kids is a one-day experience, and you see the feedback. Is there any uh, idea to feed it back into the education system, to the schools? so they can continue the program if I, you can't be there. Yeah, no, that's a fantastic question. The question is, after we do this experience with the kids for one hour, one day, whatever, how do we continue the impact? How do we kind of make the, the, um, Change. the changes continue? So that's exactly what we're working on right now. Um, we're shifting our focus from delivering a lot of direct-to-kids programming to working with teachers instead. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to prototype over the next couple of months is um, engagements and relationships with local educators in Bay Area schools where we coach the teachers and help the teachers invent these kinds of workshops. And maybe the truck visits for some of them and they can use the laser cutter on the truck to run some of them. But then the idea is the truck leaves and the teacher then remains empowered with these new experimental, exploratory, integrated ways of doing things that can continue in the classroom long after we're gone. So that's, that's the whole, yeah. So, so you're entrepreneurs and you found a pretty interesting product market fit. Uh, why are you not expanding? <coughs> And try to duplicate and find, start hundreds of trucks all around the country. Yeah, you know, wh why not scale and expand to a fleet of spark trucks? Um, it, you know, it's, it's a fun idea and, and one that we've thought about. Um, but honestly, there's just been so much need to do deep quality stuff on a local scale right now. Um, and we are not yet in a hurry to make a billion of these before we, we make sure we nail one really, really well and get a system that works and in place and has impact that lasts more than the one day. And then maybe scaling can happen. Geographical scaling, not temporal scale, can happen a little bit down the road. Yeah, maybe last you scan, question. scan all these notes and put it on a website? Um, yeah, so one of our projects right now is actually compiling a how to make your own spark drug guide um, so that we kind of open source 
the idea so that it can get replicated. Maybe without us doing the scaling, it could be kind of grassroots replicated all over the place. That would be a fun way to explain. Thanks, guys. Ooh.